Hey my friends, how you doing? This is Coffee Chug here, and I wanted to show you how my daughter, my youngest daughter, she's in fourth grade, we're doing the hybrid learning where we're being asked to do some stuff at home, we're doing stuff at school, it's just a lot going on, and I wanted her to share this one, but just time is just, it's a lot. So I hope you bear with me that you don't mind that the adult's going to do the explanation of this world. But I want to give credit up front to uh, my daughter Ava for creating this world as well as my son who's a high school student who did take time to help build on a couple of things that she needed help with. But she did 80% of this uh, with 20% guidance from my oldest son, which is awesome as a parent and an educator. So the, the lesson, I'm not going to go through the in, entire lesson, but the gist of the lesson that she was studying, that we had to study at home, was on kinetic and potential energy. So we were watching some videos, we had to do some studying on what it is, whatnot, and then we had to do an experiment at home. And at home, the experiment was to use materials that you have, hot wheel tracks, things like that, to create an experiment to showcase your understanding of kinetic and potential energy where you change one variable. Now, probably most kids in fourth grade are going to change the height. And as we were doing this, while yes, I have a lot of nerdy supplies for makerspace and things like that, I was thinking about it from an equity lens. And what about the kids that just don't have materials at home to do stuff? And I was thinking that this is where Minecraft can play such a huge role if you were a district that happened to supply Minecraft education to their students. So that's the setup. So we had to create an exper experiment on kinetic and potential energy, and then we had to create and change one variable. In this case, we chose heights. And this is what she developed. She used the Minecraft cart. She used these colored blocks as measuring. She knows that from red to red is uh, six blocks every time. So she has a measuring device by color coding. It helps her count and code. And then we just built a leverage here where we increased the height of the cart by one each time up so that we are changing the variable of the height. And, and yes, I know there's a little bit longer track going down. However, there's no other way to do it. But we start at the same point every single time. And so now I've got a cow here. So I need to get this cow out of here. So uh, hope you don't mind me. Hurting this cow, no real car cows harmed in the process here. Um, but what we did was we set the, the cart right here at the, at the beginning of each track, and we're just going. Okay. So what we're going to do here is on each cart, in order to make sure that we hit the cart properly with the same amount of force, because that was a big thing we we found out as we were testing this is if we hit it really fast, it might go further than we anticipated. We are crouching. Uh, with each one. So as we do that, we're holding the, the shift to crouch and we're just going to nudge the cart here. So let me get this one set up. And what we're doing is we're watching to see how far the cart will travel on each nudge. And so then we're able to go through, oops, hit that one, but that's okay. It might work out. And what we're doing is we're, we're hopefully going to see a progression of further and further distance of taking potential energy into kinetic energy, all the potential, you know, with the slope and then moving into the kinetic. And she's able to see that hopefully the more we have of a distance to build up that potential energy, the more kinetic we have, which is going to take it further down the track. So we will continue to do this, just like you can see here. Actually, let me go ahead and do this one again. Oh, it'll be all right. We can see that there is a nice progression. And this actually should be a little bit higher if I would have hit it the way I was supposed to. You see this girl. I'll, I'll put the screenshot in here, what we see. So then, she, so then she was able to go through then and count and see how many blocks each one traveled in comparison to the height. And we were able to make a nice little write-up for her science experiment. So it was a very 
easy build in terms of like for a kid to create. This didn't take very long to build in Minecraft. We had to teach just a little bit in terms of the cart, but once you understood how to hit that and then bump it with the, the shift key, we were definitely in, in great shape. And now here we are with a pig riding the cart. Great. Um, so I just wanted to share that with you. Hopefully it inspires, gives you some new thoughts and ideas over the power of Minecraft. And I'm really excited to continue to share some other ways in which we can use Minecraft to benefit the classroom, especially as we think about remote and hybrid and face-to-face -face teaching. All right, my friends, as always, stay awesome. Peace.